Hi everyone, I'm Furkan and I'm developing an indie football game with my game engine. In this video, I'll show you how I developed the upper body part of the character simulation. I also integrated a collision detection system to enable the character's physical interaction with the environment. I started with adding the spine to the character by creating a new simulation point at the neck. The neck is the center balancing point of the upper body. I implemented a similar balance and drive functionality as the pelvis. This means the character wants to keep the neck at the same position with the pelvis on the horizontal plane. Also, while moving, the neck travels more quickly than the pelvis to the movement direction, which helps the repositioning the center of mass. I could have added more sections to the neck like the other character simulation systems, but I started with a single one to keep things simple from the start. Then I added shoulder points to the simulation. Their target positions are at the two sides of the neck position, as you can predict. The shoulder points stay in their target positions with point-to-point -point constraint implementation, which wasn't the final form of the solution, but I left it there for the sake of simplicity. Then I added new simulation points for arms. Even with the free movements of the arms, the simulation started to look satisfying when I finally saw the full body in motion. I started with simply synchronizing the arm movements with the opposite legs, but this created a very unnatural feel to it. The natural arm movements are too complicated to solve with a simple approach like this. I needed a more comprehensive solution. Then I developed a more intelligent but still simple version to swing the arms. But again, I wasn't satisfied with the result. The swing motion is not actually bad, but the whole picture felt off. So I gave up on the simple approaches and looked into the details of how humans swing their arms. I created new variables and new logic. And finally, I got very satisfied results with the swing motion of the arms. By the way, this is just mimicking the overall motion of the arms while moving, which means it'll be a more detailed system for arm-based mechanics like catching and throwing objects or pushing obstacles. Then the funny part, without writing a specific logic, the arms looked a lot natural to me while the character is kicking the ball. This kind of exploration makes me really happy in game development. I modified the pelvis orientation calculation to support the roll rotation of the hips. This became a must when the spine was included in the simulation. With new logic, the hips started to look more natural while the character is leaning. For the final part of the body, I added the head point to the simulation. In fact, the head is not simulated for now, but stays in a fixed position above the neck. I also made a simple glowing model for the head. I started to explore the character with new body parts. I also tried to pass the ball between two players, but I just avoided myself to look into the flaws since it was not the time for this. I also returned to my old demo scene to hop around and fix some elevation calculations. I started to add the colliders to the simulation to make the character interact with obstacles. I picked up the bullet physics engine because I didn't want to write all the collision detection code before deciding I actually need it. I created a bridge between the character simulation and the colliders to translate the collision response. This way I can switch between different providers for resolving collisions. I tested the implementation by throwing boxes to the torso while moving the character. I added capsule colliders for spine, hips and shoulders. It surprisingly looked well without any significant modifications. I added box colliders to the simulation for feet. I also adjusted the surface detection logic that works with the new feet colliders. That means the balance system started to depend on the physical environment. I also added new test terrains to the demo scene, which has rugged surfaces. The result was very satisfying mechanics to play with. The surprising result was the stairs are getting perfect treatment, which is one of the most popular game development problems. Having this kind of procedural system is giving me the super freedom to tune each detail of how the movement is governed and the environment interactions complete the full aspect of how a character should move in a virtual world. But also these are making the whole process even harder for minimizing the flaws, but it's the fun part. I just can't help to continue to develop to improve this system. I improved the contact friction response by applying a reasonable force to the colliders on the tangent of the contact normal, the force calculated by the friction constant of the collider pairs. As you can see on the clip, this is how you can move on a slope when you soak your right foot into seed oil. I added new colliders for legs and arms, but the simulation started to freak out since the legs and arms are the most active parts of the body. I tuned some calculations, but I wasn't satisfied with the collision response of the whole body. It's obvious this part of the problem needs a lot more trial and error to make it perfect. 
I suspect I'm wasting resources while using Bullet Physics Engine as the collision detection provider. Also, I'm probably missing some points while translating the information between the two physics systems. I'll continue to look into the dynamics of the problem, and when needed, I'll develop a more targeted collision detection system that works better with the character animation system and other objects in the environment. This will contribute to the integrity of the whole simulation. This kind of iterative improvement is what makes game development so engaging. If you're eager to dive into challenging concepts and improve your own problem-solving skills, you'll want to check out today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant offers interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI, helping you grasp complex concepts through hands-on learning. You're actively engaging with the material. It's about thinking critically and finding creative solutions. Content is crafted by experts from institutions like MIT and Google. Brilliant makes learning a habit. With just a few minutes daily, you can consistently improve your skills. One standout course is Vectors. You'll master vector operations, scaling, transformations, polar coordinates, and dot product. These principles are crucial for understanding motion and physics in digital environments. You can try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days. Just head over to brilliant.org slash fusarihan or click the link in the description or you scan the QR code to get started. You'll also get 20% off annual premium subscription. Now I finally have a first version of the full body simulation that can interact with the environment. I'll continue to develop with new character movements to support jumping and moving freely in every way possible. This will probably include multiple states like being in air, falling down and standing up, etc. I'm aiming for the goalkeeper. Some people suggested that I can share the playable demo version without a goalkeeper, but I'm not motivated to do it, since the current state is not reflecting the real spirit of what I'm trying to achieve in the long run. I also don't want you to be disappointed. I know the project scope is getting bigger, but let's see where things will take us. Thanks for watching.